The trans issue is one that has somewhat exploded into public consciousness over the last few years and and almost, it feels like, uh, very rapidly, uh, become this major issue with several different layers uh, to it. And which, I mean, every other day there's some sort of news story uh, regarding this and they get... Well, they seem to get crazier and crazier and and common sense and logic and reason seem to have gone out the window with this. It's a really, really important issue. And I think parents are increasingly concerned about it, um, particularly because this is being propagated in schools uh, and elsewhere. But let me just give you my, before I go on to the manifesto, For Britain manifesto, Uh, policies for this area because as usual we have exactly the common sense middle ground fair solution to these issues but before I do that let me just say a couple of words about what I think about this issue now I understand that there is such a thing as gender dysphoria I understand that there are people who feel desperately uncomfortable living inside their own bodies and want to live as the other sex and some people will just are so feel so wrong uh, in their own bodies that uh, they simply can't not change their bodies to fit. They really feel that they are a man or a woman uh, and they want to change their bodies to reflect that. Now, whilst I don't understand that uh, feeling, and most of us don't understand that feeling, I do believe in personal liberty and I do believe that an adult should be able to freely alter their body if they see fit. So if a man wants to cut off his penis and wear a skirt, whilst I don't understand that drive, um, I don't have to understand it, we're free people, uh, and he should be able to do that if he wishes to. But here's the thing, what he doesn't get to do is force other people to accept that he is now a woman. A woman is not a man who has cut off their penis. A woman is a woman. Uh, And many of us, myself included, don't accept that a man who removes his penis is now a woman. Uh, I don't wish any harm on that person, but I don't accept that they're a woman. And I don't accept that they should be eligible for sex-based rights created and uh, enforced for women, to protect women. Uh, I certainly don't believe in self-identification, which is a calamity which has led to ridiculous injustices. And this sort of uh, science fiction is the word that always springs, or the term that always springs to mind whenever I think of this. This, you know, that's what it feels like to me. And when you see, for example, a, a, a huge biological man winning a woman's cycling race, Uh, You know just how insane and just how crazy this is. And you know also that when a convicted sex offender is housed in a women's prison and then goes on to rape those women in that prison, you know we have entered crazy land. This is this is not uh, this is not uh, this is an altered reality. Uh, This is something that is so uh, insane that people are staring, looking at it going, what's what's going on here? It is a brilliant uh, Emperor's New Clothes demonstration because I think most of people are thinking this is ridiculous, but they can't say anything because the left have hijacked this issue and if you dare to express an opinion that they don't allow on it, which is that trans women are women and trans men are men, they will harass and hound and the uh, government is on their side, the police is on their side, you can be arrested or threatened with arrest for, uh, what is it, what is it, dead naming, that is when you use the, the, the previous name uh, of, a, of a transgender person, uh, or, uh, or, or using the wrong pronoun for them. I mean, this is, we can be arrested for this, arrested. And there's that example uh, from up in the northeast where the police phoned a guy and told him they wanted to check his thinking about the trans issue. So, like I say, there are several different layers to this, several different facets to it. So let me get on with reading from uh, the For Britain Manifesto for 2020. Fantastic manifesto, by far the best in the country, even if we do say so ourselves. Let me get, uh, let me start reading from the trans... uh, Section. So, the trans issue is increasingly prominent in British public debate. It is a provocative topic and one in which freedom of speech has been severely curtailed. Now, here's issue one. These are the layers of this issue I was talking about. 
And uh, it says the most contentious aspects of this debate can be summarised as follows. One, self-identification. Under the Gender Recognition Act 2004, those who wish to live as the opposite sex are granted a gender recognition certificate, provided they, <coughs> excuse me, provided they can show that they have lived as the opposite sex for a minimum period of two years and intend to do so for the remainder of their lives. Now, there's a little problem in this, isn't there? <coughs> what does that mean, living as the opposite sex? I mean, does it mean clothes? Uh, just clothes? Does it mean uh, participating in activities usually undertaken by one or the other sex? It's just that immediately, and this isn't the most important aspect of this, but it does raise a little bit of a, of a question and a, a little bit of a red flag. The people, the trans activists who push this stuff do so and, and say they are doing so to challenge gender stereotypes. Now, other than clothes being rather obvious, Activities, for example, if a girl likes to play football uh, and you then and you, you tell her that she is a boy in a girl's body, isn't that the ultimate gender stereotyping? Just a, a, little, a little loophole almost in there that raises a few issues and a few difficulties. So gender recognition certificate is what people are issued with. Uh, this allows a person to legally change their sex on their birth certificate and other documents. It also provides for lifelong confidentiality for the affected person. Now, some countries, however, now allow for self-identification and to make it clear, the UK is not one of them. The UK does not actually recognise uh, self-identification. But, uh, and I did a, a podcast with our spokeswoman on this, Barbara Wood. I will link to it below. Have a listen. Uh, we are acting like we do. So the police, the courts, etc., behave as if we have got self-ID in this country, but we don't. Some countries do, we don't. But the law, you know, the police act as if the, the law doesn't matter and, and the courts act as if the law doesn't matter. It's a strange modern phenomenon uh, where they act politically and, 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 you know, for social progressivism rather than to the letter of the law. A uh, very, very strange phenomenon. So self-identification means that a person merely has to state that they are the opposite sex to be allowed access to services intended for that sex. This has resulted in biological males being granted access to women's dressing rooms, bathrooms, hospital wards, prisons or other spaces intended to be private places for women uh, even even rape crisis centers and women's shelters now i have seen a despicable photograph from a women's shelter of a an inclusive women's shelter which allowed self iding it was canada allowed self iding males to come into this women's shelter and this guy was in the bathroom of this shelter shall we say, pleasuring himself uh, on camera at a crisis centre for abused women. If you don't see the problem with that and you don't see how disgusting that is, um, then perhaps this video isn't, isn't for you. As I said earlier, women and people, uh, convicted sex offenders sent to women's prisons. We even have the appalling situation also in Canada uh, in which a, uh, a period fetishist and child predator was allowed to sue women for not for refusing to wax his male genitals uh, in their <coughs> female business. So, you know, this is appalling, utterly, utterly appalling, and it has to stop. And the feminists, of course, <laughs> quote unquote feminists, guess whose side they're on? Second aspect of this, vital aspect of this, is freedom of speech. Those who do not accept that a person may legitimately change sex are currently unable to state this publicly for fear of censorship or punishment. Now, to be honest with you, I worry more about videos I make about trans than I do about immigration or Islam. Uh, it's even, the censorship is even greater on the trans issue. Police routinely arrest or threaten to arrest those thought to be guilty of misgendering, i.e. referring to a transsexual by the pronouns of their biological sex, or dead naming, referring to a transsexual by their previous 
name. Others are de-platformed or fear losing their jobs if they express their genuinely held views on this matter. Uh, there's a, a campaigner on this issue, Kelly J. Keen Mitchell, who goes by Posey Parker, and she's done some great videos on this. But we have seen, there are videos, for example, of this group called Lesbians on Chairs uh, being removed from an event because they don't believe that uh, men can become women. Uh, fear of losing job, very real. Very Same thing with um, uh, Islam or, or immigration. And people are not expressing their genuinely held opinions on this matter. For, uh, third major issue here, and here's where the liberty aspect comes in, because you do as an adult have the liberty to remove your genitals if you wish, or alter your genitals if you wish. You do not, however, have the right to tell children that they are in the wrong body, and you certainly do not have the right to inflict chemical experimentation upon children. Thousands of children uh, are being referred for gender issues uh, these days uh, and hundreds, I did a video on this recently which I linked to below, hundreds are being experimented on by the NHS uh, and uh, this with because they believe things that they're being told in state schools. So the state is spreading this propaganda and the NHS is providing the experimentation and it is experimentation on children. So trans act it starts in the schools, trans activism groups which often encourage harmful gender stereotypes as well as inventing new genders. So we've got non-binary, pansexual, I mean this even you know two spirit, the whole thing is utterly absurd. I'm sorry, but non-binary is absurd and even the conservative government uh, recognizes non-binary it's 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 beyond uh, be, beyond comprehension and in fact when the conservative government looked into this when they they did a review of gender recognition laws their starting point i kid you not the conservative party's starting point was trans women are women so if you don't believe trans women are women as i don't you're not included in this. And women's groups who don't believe trans women are women, not consulted. Trans groups, every one of them consulted and treated it as if they are the holy grail and the last word on all this. Women's groups, not consulted at all. Sports. Male to female transsexuals are currently able to compete in women's sports with the enormous unfair advantage of greater physical size and strength. On several occasions, women and girls have lost the chance of victory because they are forced to compete against biological males. And this I referred to earlier of a, a trans trans woman, uh, so-called, uh, using the name Rachel McKinnon, winning uh, women's world championship cycling. Uh, you know, I, to me, it's only a matter of time before there's a man in, or two men in the, for example, to use my own favourite sport, the women's final at Wimbledon. Only a matter of time, and the women will just be made redundant. If we carry on down this road, it's going to completely destroy women's sport. So For Britain believes that we must go back to the drawing board regarding the transgender issue, as current legislation is vague, arguably, arguably contradictory, and leaves several vital questions unanswered. Therefore, we propose a new piece of legislation to replace all that has gone before. The Gender Recognition Act will be null and void and the Equality Act updated where relevant to reflect the new legislation. Now, the Gender Act is the working title I've given it. A lot of people don't like the word gender. I'm more than happy to review any name that we would give to such an act. The Gender Act will pr protect the rights of transsexuals to live their lives as they see fit whilst prioritising the safety and rights of biological females where clashes occur. Now, here's another matter that transsexuals are just going to have to accept. You may live your life as you see fit, but you won't force the rest of us to go against what we believe to be the truth, and you won't uh, acquire the rights that were created for the benefit of women because they are women. So, For Britain will continue to grant gender recognition certificates to those who prove their commitment to change in their sex by having undergone or begun the process of undergoing full gender reassignment 
automatic lifelong confidentiality will come to an end and may be breached in certain circumstances. Now, this is the opening part of our policy. It does recognise the liberty of people to change their sex. Uh, we may not understand it, most of us, uh, but we don't have to understand it. Uh, we are free people and we still uh, respect the rights of adults to alter their bodies if they see fit. They're not harming uh, other people. Of course, it causes harm to families, etc., but we... That's that's life. So here's what really needs to happen. Whilst we recognise the right of transsexuals, here's what needs to happen to sort out the madness. One, end self-identification. Now, I mentioned that we it's not law in this country, but we act as if it is. Stop it. Stop acting as if it is. Let make the police and the courts abide by the law. Remember the law? <laughs> it just seems the courts don't. Access to women-only spaces or laws intended for the protection of biological females will not be granted to self-identifying male to female transsexuals. Restore free speech. People will not be arrested or threatened with arrest or lose their job or have their right to express an opinion on transgenderism restricted or prohibited in any way. I hope that's clear enough as it is. <clears throat> prevent trans activism campaigners accessing schools absolutely this is crazy why 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 suddenly do trans groups have all this access to school they're receiving government funding to go into schools and tell young children about non-binary and pansexual and even fetishes even fetishes has to stop yesterday Prevent the administration, and this part is crucial, prevent the administration of puberty blockers or any hormone or medication intended to alter or interfere with the natural progression of bodily development to anyone under the age of 21, and it will be a criminal offence to do so. Now, we have a situation, uh, and again, I'll link to the video I made about this recently. We have a situation, as I said, where kids are being experimented on by the NHS. Absolutely unforgivable, unfathomable. And I don't believe that the British public are fully aware of the danger and the sinister nature of this. This has got to stop. There will be no medical intervention or hormonal intervention until the age of 21 when an adult can decide for themselves if they want to do that. And the next section extends on that by prohibiting medical or surgical intervention for the purpose of changing sex to anyone under the age of 21. Prevent male to female transsexuals participating in sporting events intended for biological females. Transsexuals can organise their own sporting contest and I'm not being flippant when I say that, it's true. It's true. You know, this is one thing that uh, the disadvantaged transsexuals are at. Well, I'm sorry, but that's life. You don't get to get everything you want in this life. And we're not going to destroy women's sports so that a tiny number of transsexuals can participate. Finally, prevent male to female transsexuals from working in women's shelters, dressing rooms, girl guides or any other space intended to be reserved for biological females. Male to female transsexuals may be imprisoned with biological females only if their male genitalia has been removed and they do not present a threat to biological females. Now, I, I do go on to say male to female transsexuals should not, however, be placed in danger themselves, i.e. in a male prison, therefore... Such prisoners should be classified as vulnerable and afforded full protection. Now, it would be torture and it would be wrong to put a male to female transsexual into a male prison. I think we know what would happen. Um, so in this case, I think on the grounds of safety, a possible exception, either that they are classed as a vulnerable prisoner and given protection in that regard, or they have no male genitals uh, and therefore don't pose a, a well lesser of a significant uh, sexual risk to females. This is all simple. It's all fair. It's the middle ground that we need. And yes, transsexuals don't get to get everything they want, but I'm afraid, like I say, that's life. Uh, women deserve 
protection from sexual offenders, even including <laughs> including women in prisons, women are, you know, we must have this uh, protection. Uh, women were given these protections for a reason and we mustn't now hand them over to self-identifying males and all you're going or female and all you're going to get from the the left-wing agitators on this is not all transsexuals are sexual predators oh, it's you know you it's 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 like the not all muslims not all migrants thing it's it's absurd it's a non-argument fact is uh sex offenders are identifying as women and it's destroying many many aspects of women's lives we also have uh it's you know it, it's not only women that are affected by this young boys are having their bodies destroyed having their genitals cut off having their minds destroyed uh, by this uh, ag ag agitator that's the that's the word trans agitators who are bullying uh and harassing their way through this and weak Pathetic governments are giving them everything they ask for. We must stop. We must find a reasonable, fair middle ground of common sense. And that is, once again, what For Britain is offering. Check out the rest of our manifesto, forbritain.uk. And if you like what you read, if you like what you hear, join us.